start here and there, you are going to find some particles of information scattered in scriptures. But we understand that in the heavens and in the spirit realm, creatures are ranked. When you get to heaven, the only beings that are permitted to sit on thrones are called elders. That means there is an age that existed where certain excellencies were granted the opportunity to co co inherit and rule together with God. So their representation in the heavens were given opportunity to sit on thrones. So Revelation chapter 4 said there are 24 thrones surrounding the throne of God. And he said seated on it are 24 elders. Now when we looked at those elders and studied their reality, the Bible revealed to us that they never sat on those thrones. Because the moment God shows up, he said they fall on their faces and they cast their crown and they say holy is the Lord. That means their preoccupation in the spirit realm is worship. And every time these beings were mentioned, the only thing they did was worship. So it's possible that the code of their civilization is worship. So you grow in that civilization to the degree that you worship God. And they being the elders have perfected the act of worship. So God decided to surround himself with them. You know in the olden times when a king is so powerful, they put orators around him. The job of the orators is when, when he stands up, they say, Odogu, Omekanaya, Aguji Egbe. They, they, they throw names, they throw names, they throw salutation, and then it will remind the king of his majesty. Those ones, if you touch them, the king will kill you. Their job is to appetize him with worship. That's what the elders do. So they surround that throne. So their age is regulated by worship. We also understand that there are other beings. They are called the beasts. They said they had the face of a man, the face of a lion, the face of an ox, the face of an eagle. These ones carry the throne of God. When God moves, they move with him. And their speed is like lightning. Now, because they need to move at God's frequency, they have face on every side. Because before they turn, God may leave them behind. So when God is going this way, they just go. If God is going this way, they don't need to turn. Everywhere is face. <laughs> they are creatures of glory. So the job of this man is to guard the glory of God. They are cherubims. So when you walk into the civilization of the cherubims, what gives you rank is the degree of glory that you carry. So their preoccupation is to interact with the glory and to glow in the glory. That's a code that governs their age. And then we understand there are, there are other beings in heaven called angels. These ones run the errands of Abba. That's why they are actually called angels. Not every creature in heaven is an angel. Some are elders. Some are beasts that do the business of the glory. But angels are high commissioners. Their duty is to run the errand of God. So when God wanted a virgin to give birth, he sent an angel. And he said the angel Gabriel showed up and said, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. That's their job. That means in the angelic realm, what governs their civilization is service. You can't be an angel until you serve God and you serve him perfectly. The moment your service is affected, you lose the right to become an angel. So one of the angels that lived in heaven was called Lucifer. He was a creature that provided service in the area of worship. But the point came, he said, no, I can't continue serving. When I looked at God, I also have glory like God. I will exalt my throne. I want to be like the most high. And they say, Kai, what governs your age is service. If you can't serve anymore, this realm can't accommodate you. So you will fall. So he fell from glory. The reason he fell was because what governs his age is service. And if you are not serving, you can't be an angel. So he became a fallen creature. It is from him that the civilization of demons emerged. Those who rebel against God. Because their job is to align with God. And that alignment is through service. Now that you have refused to serve, you have taken another pathway. It's called rebellion. 
There are so many other beings in heaven. Some are called thrones. Their name is thrones. They are spirits of heaven. Others are called dominion. Others are called principalities. So they are different entities. It's a strange realm. Those who want to see heaven, if they carry you there, you may faint. You will see all kinds of creatures because there are different civilizations in that realm. But when God completed everything he wanted to do, he decided to create another civilization. Now, the Bible calls him the one that dwells in the cycles of eternity. Because every cycle is a civilization. Every cycle is an age. And if you study Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10, he said, when the age of man is accomplished, he said, he will roll this realm away like a canopy. He will roll it away. And he will start another project. But after he did all of the things he did in the spirit realm, he decided to create another civilization. This time, not spirit. He sculpted the physical realm, the visible realm, out of the invincible realm. And when he sculpted the visible realm out of the invisible realm, he decided to create another being that is not spirit. But this being will be a strange being in that he will be both corpora and spirit. He will have physical component and spiritual component. And the way this being will live will not be like the angels anymore. Because when the angels were given autonomy, they decided to rebel. So he created another being and introduced another wisdom to govern the age of that being. And so this being he created was called man. And what he did through man was that you don't have the right to live. The only way you can live is to give expression to me. So I will form dust and I will hide myself in dust. So when you look at dust, it has no value. But locked within dust is the immortal God himself dwelling there. So man became God, hid in dust. So the code that governs the age of man is not service. Even though man will serve God by all means. The code that governs the age of man is intimacy. That was why in Colossians 1.26 when Paul was talking, he said, in case you are not aware the age you have found yourself, he said, this is the mystery of this age. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That means, as a man, you are not relevant in the realm of God until you know how to touch that Christ that dwells on your inside. You know, today, man wants to live independently as a man of man. So there are some schools of thought that tells you, if you think deep, they are called deep thinkers. When you think very deep, you can become a wise man and you will, you will make your way in life. 